Hello everyone and welcome back to part 9 of my Unraid series. Today we're going to discuss Plex, how to install and configure, and how to get it up and running. And also how to connect it up to the Samba shares that are already set up on our Unraid server. Alright, so let's go ahead and get logged into your Unraid server. And then once you're logged in, go ahead and navigate over to the apps section. And you're going to search for Plex. That's P-L-E-X. And the only thing we're going to do a little different is we're not installing the Binhex version. We are installing the official release for the Plex Media server. So go ahead and hit install. And a few things we need to uh, look at. Uh, the transcode, I believe you can either leave it blank or you can select a directory to uh, do your transcoding. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select forward slash TMP. Uh, which is basically the transcoding will be done on the RAM. Um, next is your container path for, I think it's a host path number three. And that's where your data or the media is located. All right, so we're just going to select media. We're not going to, we're not necessarily going to select movies or TV shows. We just want to reference just this folder as the uh, forward slash data. Okay, and then this right here is going to be the um, plex.tv claim. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to use this URL to claim your plex server. Okay, and basically tie it up to your plex.tv account. Okay, once you've navigated to the plex.tv forward slash claim, you're going to go ahead and log in. And it's going to give you a claim number. Go ahead and copy to clipboard. Let's go back to our installation. Uh, you're going to insert the token here. Oh. Okay. And then let's move on. Um, Plex UID. We can leave that. Leave that. And the latest version is fine. We'll go ahead and hit apply. And we're going to go ahead and call that done. All right. Okay. From here, you're going to go ahead and select the dashboard. And we're going to go ahead and select the Plex Media Server. Go to Web UI. Okay. Go ahead and sign in. And now it's going to go through the basic installation flow. All right, the server setup. Now it shows the name for my server is going to be Tower. Uh, that's because I didn't change it from the initial install. I just kind of left it as is. But for this server, we're going to go ahead and name this one Orion. Okay. And from here, I want to allow access outside my media, outside my home. Okay. And organize my media. Yes. I'll show you how to add li libraries in a moment, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and click next, okay? Done. All right, so this is pretty much my primary server that you're seeing here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and select my server, the newly created one. All right, and so we have Orion set up, okay? And we'll go to home, we'll go to more, and we'll go down to uh, the Orion server. Okay. And then from here, you go ahead and click on the add library. And then since we already have movies and TV shows already uh, set up on our share drive, uh, we're going to go and start off with movies. So we'll select movies. Um, okay. We'll go to add folders. We're going to go ahead and browse to our media folder. And we're going to select I believe it's under it's a uh, data and then movies okay and then we're gonna hit add and then advanced uh, some things to um, check before you proceed further if you have a large library or you plan on having a large library uh, and this is totally up to you but it would be recommended that the uh, enable video previews and um, you can keep the credit detection on, but if you're starting fresh like we are here, we can go ahead and select this one. But if you have a very large library, 
and you don't want to um, bog a lot of system resources down, uh, I would suggest unchecking that and that could be done or performed at a later time. Uh, but for the most part, we'll just leave everything as is. We'll go ahead and hit add library. All right. All right, and let's go ahead and do the uh, TV shows. Okay. And then we'll go down to... All right, so let's go ahead and add the TV shows. Let's go ahead and hit the plus symbol again. Select TV shows, hit add folder, browse for media. All right, data, select the TV shows folder, hit add. And then let's go down to advanced. All right. And then go ahead and make sure you have your scanner and agents uh, set up. If you want to change that, you can. Um, everything else we'll leave as is. And we'll go ahead and hit add library. And that's been configured. All right. So right now it's doing a scan of the movies and then it's going to do a scan of TV shows. So you can see how the movie that we initially selected in, um, in radar is, showed, is showing up here. And then you can also see the show for um, our, our sonar is also shown up here. Um, a few other things to mention. Let's go take a look at the settings. All right. Is we want to make sure that anytime a movie gets added or a show or gets added to your your library, you want to make sure that it is. Um, you want to make sure that the Plex server itself is picking up on that change and adding that show or movie to the. Uh, it's basically updating it into Plex. So we'll go ahead and hit library. And let's do scan my library automatically. Run a partial scan when changes are detected. And uh, you can do scan my library periodically. Uh, you can do a scan for maybe hourly or every couple of, let's say, let's say six hours. All right. And you can make additional changes here as you see fit. Uh, but for the most part, I think that's pretty much it. Here are some additional configurations you can run. Uh, if you want to run a scanner task at a lower priority, you can set that here. All right. These are different uh, tasks that, that can be ran in the background, such as generating intro video markers. Uh, you can also do uh, generate video uh, credit markers as well. Uh, generate chapter thumbnails. Those are the thumbnails that you show whenever you're skimming through a, a movie or a TV show. Uh, same thing with analyze audio tracks and analyze audio tracks for sonic features. All right, but for the most part, that's pretty much all the uh, settings you'll need to change in Plex. Uh, we'll go ahead and save those changes. Now, when we get down to the remote access, so if you wanted to access your server outside of your network, uh, you would need to configure uh, some type of port forwarding on your router. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and manually select the port number 32401. Uh, normally we would pick 32400. Um, however, that port's currently being used by my primary Plex server. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change things up and set it to 32401. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. So we've already specified our port number. And it's uh, not showing available outside our network. So let's go ahead and jump in our router. Uh, in my case, I'm using a Microtik. Um, we're going to go ahead and take our rule. And we're going to go ahead and uh, duplicate it. All right. And let's go ahead and change this to our external port of 32401. And the internal IP address is 1002.114 and the port number is 32400 so that's our internal port this is our internal IP address okay and then you have 
the destination port 32401. Once all those changes have been done, let's go ahead and, and hit apply. Okay, we'll hit okay. And now you can see that there is a, now a rule for the, uh, for the or remote access for the uh, secondary Plex server that we have. All right, so let's go back to our Plex server and let's hit retry. All right, so now you can see it's fully accessible outside of our network and we should be good to go. Guys, I hope you enjoy your, your, your Plex server. All right, if you also like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, can you leave a comment below? I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to really hear from you guys. Uh, if there's anything else, until um, next time, bye guys.